Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem of the United States of America and the invocation offered this morning by Chaplain Gee. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we seek your blessing upon today's ceremony and everyone attending. We especially give thanks for today's inductees and their faithful service to their countries during times of both peace and war. We recognize and are humbled by the fact that we stand upon the shoulders of leaders like these, leaders that have gone before us modeling courage under fire and consummate professionalism. May their contributions and service inspire us all to be better leaders. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the United States Army Command and General Staff College International Hall of Fame induction ceremony. In 1973, the United States Army Command and General Staff College, the Kansas City chapter of the Military Order of the World Wars, and the Alumni Association, now known as the CGSC Foundation, jointly established the International Hall of Fame. The Hall's purpose is to pr provide a prestigious and visible means of recognition for international graduates who through military merit have attained one of the highest positions of importance in their respective countries' armed forces, or who have held an equivalent position by rank or responsibility in a multinational military organization. To date, we have inducted 280 international graduates from 75 different nations into the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College's International Hall of Fame. Fifteen of those inductees served as either head of state or head of government for their respective nation. Today we have the honor of welcoming three new inductees into the International Hall of Fame's family of nations. It's my pleasure to introduce the official party for today's ceremony. Brigadier General Troy D. Galloway, Deputy Commandant of the Command and General Staff College, to the right of the Deputy Commandant is Mr. Michael Hockley, Chairman of the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College Foundation. Our honorees this morning are General Barry Del Valle Sosa, Chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Armed Forces of Argentina, CGSOC Class of 1995. To General Sosa's left, General Bipin Ravut, Chief of the Army Staff of the Indian Army, CGSOC class of 1997, and to General Ravut's left, Lieutenant General Rocky R. Meade, 
Chief of Defense Staff, Jamaica, CGSOC Class of 2003. Our award bearer this morning is Corporal Giovanni Johnson, United States Marine Corps. We'd also wish to extend a warm welcome to several distinguished guests with us today. Ms. Marta Graciela, spouse of the Chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Argentina. Mrs. Marulika Ravat, spouse of the Chief of Staff, Indian Army. Mrs. Nor Lorianne Mead, spouse of the Chief of Staff, excuse me, spouse of the Chief of Defense, Jamaica. Mr. Riker Mead, son of Lieutenant General and Mrs. Mead. The Honorable Frank Offutt, Mayor, Platt City, Missouri. Mrs. Michael Lundy, spouse of the Commandant, United States Army Command and General Staff College. Command Sergeant Major Eric Dosti, Command Sergeant Major for the Combined Arms Center. And Mrs. Troy Galloway, spouse of the Deputy Commandant, United States Army Command and General Staff College. General Officers, Commanders, Command Sergeants Major, guests, friends, and former sponsors of our inductees, and the leadership and current membership of both the Kansas City Chapter of People to People International and Leavenworth Lansing Operation International, thank you all for joining us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Commandant of the United States Army Command and General Staff College, Brigadier General Troy Galloway. Good morning. On behalf of Lieutenant General Lundy and the Commander General Staff College, it is our honor to induct three exceptional and exceedingly accomplished international graduates of the Commander General Staff College. Each achieved international Hall of Fame eligibility by distinguishing themselves in service to their home nation and by rising to the highest positions of uniformed leadership in their respective countries' militaries. More than 8,100 international military graduates, beginning with Major Henri Lecomte of Switzerland in 1894, and from 164 countries since, called Fort Leavenworth and the Leavenworth Community home while attending the Commander General Staff Officers course. International Hall of Fame inductees represent the absolute pinnacle of professional achievement as senior uniform leaders. I'm thrilled that this year's CGSOC class of U.S. and international students are here to share in this special occasion today. We recognize three of our most distinguished graduates. Their respective efforts furthered the readiness of their militaries, the security of their nations, and the stability of our world. I'm extremely proud of the bonds forged here at the college and the lasting partnerships established between our nations. The leaders that we induct today represent the finest traditions of the Commander General Staff College. Our first inductee is General Sosa of Argentina. Today he becomes the 281st inductee and the third Argentine graduate to achieve this prestigious recognition. A 1995 graduate, General Sosa has given more than 30 years of service to his nation and followed up his attendance at CGSC in a number of increasingly demanding assignments, culminating in his current appointment as the Chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Argentine Armed Forces. General Sosa focused on cooperative efforts with the United States with special emphasis on our military-to-military -military ties that continue to produce benefits for both nations. These initiatives range from mountain warfare school exchanges to cultural understanding and leadership programs. General Sosa's leadership demonstrates that Argentina is a strong and reliable partner in maintaining peace and security in the Western Hemisphere. Please publish the order. Please keep your seats as we read the induction order. Attention to orders. The United States Army Command and General Staff College. Be it known that General Barry de Vallesosa, 
Chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Armed Forces of Argentina, in recognition of outstanding military achievement in service to his country's armed forces, has been inducted into the United States Army Command and General Staff College International Hall of Fame. In testimony whereof, and by authority vested in us, we do confer upon him this honor at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, this fourth day of April, 2019. General Galloway and General Sosa will now unveil the portrait we will place in the International Hall of Fame. Mr. Hockley will now present a gift to General Sosa, designating him an honorary life constituent in the United States Army Command and Drill Staff College Foundation. And now, Brigadier General Galloway will present a certificate on behalf of the Military Order of the World Wars, signifying General Sosa's status as an inductee into the International Hall of Fame. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, General Sosa. Good morning. General Troy Galloway and Mrs. Galloway, Honorable, Honorable Frank Outfoot, Major of Plate City, Missouri, Lieutenant General Robert Archer, Command Sergeant Major Eric Dossi, Mrs. Michael Landy, General Officers, Commanders, Command Sergeant Majors, guests, friends, leaderships, and sponsors from Leavenworth and Lansing Operation International and Greater Kansas City People to People. I thank every single of you for your presence here today. To me and to my, and to my wife, Marta, who is here, it is a pleasure and honor to, to be at the induction ceremony in the International Hall of Fame. Because our road through Fort Leavenworth is part of our lives, and it, it, it has left a deep mark within us. As we arrived yesterday, and were taking in the site of the city and the fort, so many fond memories came back to my mind. It felt to me as if it was yesterday, but my great hairs say it otherwise. <laughs> it is not consequence, however, as the spirit remains. To prepare these words, I've been thinking deeply. I wanted to express myself with an inspiring, original, and positive message, especially directed to the young officers who are present here today. Inspiring, original, and positive message. And suddenly, a revolutionary idea came to me. My message should be, my message should be the title, The Best Year of Our Lives. <laughs> Placing back my words, I would like to share with you a few brushes of this incredible experience in both the personal and professional framework. We are an institution committed to education and training of future leaders, where doctrine is developed and updated time to time. It is here where the best tools for command are created in view of the new challenges in, in our times. Therefore, an unparalleled atmosphere that has been 
harbor here is distinctive because officers from the United States and more than 100 countries make up a unique place for the exchange of ideas, visions, experiences, and different cultures. I deeply value this international climate as an engine to foster knowledge, bonds, and professional expertise. All in all, the combination of hard work, dedication, and integrity bring us to the tools to qualify, to build qualified leaders with a vision for the future. Today, the world is witnessing an increasing amount of armed conflict scenarios with new approaches. It is a multi-domain environment with innovative methods, strategies, and players, new military and non-military operations, state and non-state actors, conventional and non-conventional tactics, including terrorism, cybercrime, and propaganda are appearing. For this kind of world, open-minded officers, officers having solid moral and professional value are needed, including deep love for their homelands. Here, in Fort Leavenworth, we pave the road to battle against these challenges. On the other hand, I would like to say a few words related to, to me and my family experience during these years which has been so special to us, pointed out that everything is prepared to easy family life. First, I'd like to command, to command and, and thanks my sponsor at Leavenworth, Kansas, and the military. Every one of them performed their duties with care, dedication, and a lot of affection, much more than, than usual. How can I not remember when one of our children learned to read and write in English before he knew it in, in Spanish? May I remind you that we speak Spanish. <laughs> and also the activity schedule for wives and, and children, such as culture, sports, and education, all perfectly covered all. Finally, the most important is that our youngest daughter, Maria del Rosario, was born here the only girl out of five children. After all of these words, do you understand what Fort Leavenworth means to us? In the armed forces of the Argentine Republic, we are undergoing a deep restructuring process. As the chief of the joint staff, I have the responsibility of, the, of leadering from the military point of view. I have no doubt that my passage through these classrooms has left its mark on my professional education and thus gave me a solid foundation from which I can face this challenge. To conclude my speech, I'll be forever grateful to the CGSC, its instructors, and the class 1995, particularly the AC staff group. And I hope to continue to generate to coming generation continuing to enjoy this external intellectual defy and the privilege of sharing studies with future world leaders military. Thank you very much for this induction ceremony. Thank you very much. Our next inductee is General Ravat, Chief of the Army Staff, Indian Army. He is the International Hall of Fame's 282nd inductee and the second Indian graduate to achieve this recognition. General Ravat is the driving force in a highly ambitious transformation of the world's second largest army. His efforts are changing the way the very nature of the Indian military by making fundamental changes and adjustments to organizational structure, updating doctrine, and by modernizing combat systems. That may sound familiar to some of you. His leadership and innovation is key to that continued transformation, and his leadership is critically instrumental in deepening U.S. and Indian ties and the military cooperation 
between our two nations. Strengthening U.S.-Indian military cooperation is critically important to providing security for both nations. General Watt is a trusted partner in fostering and growing that cooperation. Please publish the order. Attention to orders. The United States Army Command and General Staff College. Be it known that General Bipin Ravat, Chief of the Army Staff of the Indian Army, in recognition of outstanding military achievement in service to his country's armed forces, has been inducted into the United States Army Command and General Staff College International Hall of Fame. In testimony whereof, and by authority vested in us, we do confer upon him this honor given at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, this fourth day of April, 2019. General Galloway and General Ravat now unveil the portrait we will place in the International Hall of Fame. <laughs> Mr. Hockley will present a gift to General Ravat, designating him an honorary life constituent of the United States Army Command and General Staff College Foundation. And General Galloway will present a certificate on behalf of the Military Order of the World Wars, signifying General Ravat's status as an inductee into the International Hall of Fame. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, General Bipin Ravat. Good morning, everybody. Brigadier General Galloway, General Sosa, General Meade, Mrs. Landy, Command Sergeant Major Dosti, officers undergoing the CG SOC course, other officers international officers, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is with a deep sense of pride that I stand here before you, being inducted into the Hall of Fame, an honor which I owe to this very institution. I do recall 22 years ago when we drove into Fort Leavenworth. It indeed was the best year of our life. <laughs> the hall wasn't as good <laughs> as it is today, but yet it imparted knowledge that had held me in good stead throughout my years in service. Fort Leavenworth has changed. Only the structures have witnessed a change. But I'm quite confident that the leadership training that is imparted here is of the highest order. The operational art perspective that each one of us went through has helped me in riding the rough waves throughout my career, taking timely decisions when they were called for. And therefore, my rise to the highest rank in my army, I do owe partly to the capabilities, attributes, and the leadership qualities that we acquired here 
in a small class group, class group discussions through the instructors who imparted quality education to each one of us. I stand tall here today because of this very institution for which I am most grateful. As far as India and the United States are concerned, the leadership of both our nations are envisioning a common vision for the international community. And with that vision in sight, we are working on common principles which bind us together and hopefully in the future we will see a rare strategic partnership developing between India and the United States. Like the United States, we are very concerned about the global international order and the manner in which it is emerging. We all want a rule-based order. And that is one issue where we wish to collaborate. The next issue on which we need to move on ahead is complete freedom of navigation on the high seas. While in India, we are more concerned about the Indo-Pacific region, through which area passes 70% of the world's commerce and trade, and 60% of the energy requirements of the entire international community. Therefore, freedom of navigation on the high seas is of utmost primacy and concern to us. While we do understand the United States has a global presence and must ensure the freedom of navigation and UNCLOS being applied in every ocean and sea around this globe. We, in particular, wish to collaborate to ensure that the Indian Indo-Pacific region remains safe for freedom of navigation. The next issue is the issue on global war on terrorism. India is located in a region which is the epicenter of terrorism. Along with the United States, we have a common vision to ensure that no country can carry out activities of terrorism through state-sponsored terrorism. We must eradicate this menace from the face of the earth because no longer can we allow the future generation to get affected by violence and the culture of gun. So this is one common understanding that we have and we are very happy to get the support of the United States on this issue. Next is the menace of drugs. India lies between the Golden Triangle and the Golden Crescent. And it is from this region emerges the largest quantities and varieties of drugs which are being smuggled to the Western Hemisphere, which are affecting our future generations and to a large extent are providing the fuel and fodder for terrorism. And last but not the least, is the protection of the environment because we cannot allow our future generations to be affected by a degraded environment. And this is one issue where we need to collaborate. So ladies and gentlemen, India and the United States have embarked on a new mission on developing a strategic partnership which we hope will hold us in good stead in the years ahead. And before I conclude, I cannot but help thank our sponsors who treated us like family when we were here. Me, my wife, and my two daughters, Kritika and Tarani, our Kansas City sponsors, the Youngs, they have not been able to come here. My Leavenworth sponsors, Francis, God bless his soul, and of course, Eunice Alexander who is amongst us today. My military sponsor, Major Keith Bosch from the United States Air Force and his very caring wife, Delane, 
We are indeed very grateful to them for having given us the best year of our life during our stay here at Livenworth. So in the end, ladies and gentlemen, let me thank you once again for having given us this honor today. And with this, I also compliment General and Mrs. Sosa and General and Mrs. Mead for having also got the opportunity of being inducted to the Hall of Fame along with us. Thank you and long live India-US relationship. Jai Hind. Our final inductee this morning is Lieutenant General Mead, the Chief of Defense Staff, Jamaica Defense Forces. He is our 283rd inductee and the second Jamaican graduate to achieve this recognition. As the Chief of Defense of one of our most important Caribbean defense partners, General Meade holds the distinction of being the first Lieutenant General having been appointed in the Jamaican Defense Forces. His leadership is indispensable to the modernization of the Jamaican Defense Force. An important example is the creation of the Jamaican Maritime Patrol aircraft capability for the first time in the island's history. Jamaica lays proud claim to being the first country to participate in the United States National Guard's state partnership program, which now includes 81 nations that participate and they proudly continue their partnership with the District of Columbia National Guard. We are deeply honored for the opportunity to recognize Lieutenant General Meade. Publish the order. Attention to orders. The United States Army Command and General Staff College. Be it known that Lieutenant General Rocky R. Meade, Chief of Defense Staff, Jamaica, in recognition of outstanding military achievement and service to his country's armed forces, has been inducted into the United States Army Command and General Staff College International Hall of Fame. In testimony whereof, and by authority vested in us, we do confer upon him this honor, given at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, this fourth day of April, 2019. General Galloway and General Meade will now unveil the portrait we will place in the International Hall of Fame. Mr. Hockley is presenting a gift to General Meade, designating him an honorary life constituent of the United States Army Command and General Staff College Foundation. And General Galloway will present a certificate on behalf of the Military Order of the World Wars, signifying General Meade's status as an inductee into the International Hall of Fame. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Rocky R. Meade. Brigadier General Galloway and Mrs. Galloway, General Sosa and Mrs. Sosa, General Watt and Mrs. Rabat, senior staff of the General Command and Staff College, specially invited guests, members of this year's graduating class, friends and families, sponsors, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is indeed an honor for me to join my colleagues from Argentina and India today for the induction ceremony. I must say that the best year of my life is the year that my wife and myself spent watching our young son 
grow this first year. But the program here is easily second best. <laughs> For this recognition today, I wish to thank General Lundy and the leadership of the command and General Staff College, including the Selection Committee for the International Hall of Fame, the Charge of Affairs and Staff of the United States Embassy, particularly Lieutenant Colonel Pablo Raggio, the Senior Defense Official, my staff, officers, men and women of the Jamaica Defense Force, my family, my sponsors, and I'd like to single out uh, uh, Joe and Debbie Clark who were able to come and be with us today. Uh, Vic Miles from Kansas is not able to come. I'm going to visit him later today. As a full-time soldier and part-time educator, I believe that all learning experiences are valuable. My experiences during my almost one year at the Staff College was instrumental in enabling me to more effectively develop and lead a strategic vision for my force, Jamaica, and the region. As I reflect on the time spent here, I would like to leave a few thoughts, particularly with this year's graduating class. Firstly, when you take on a new job, own at least one problem that will define your tenure. While here, I had in mind several problems affecting the JDF, and so with every experience, every lecture, every encounter, I could see elements of potential solutions. Secondly, set goals that appear to be impossible to achieve. Although the staff course was very demanding, I took on numerous other activities, including the master's degree, lecturing at the University of Kansas, doing three different martial arts, a year-long Bible study course, improving my swimming, volunteered in many programs, and toured many places of interest as far away as Hollywood. This required mastery of the skill of multitasking, which I find critical today as I lead the transformation of the JDF, manage my family, my duties as lecturer, and supervisor of doctoral students, etc. Three, create a plan, but be patient, especially if you are not yet in command. In 1983, Brigadier General Colin Powell identified while here the need to recognize soldiers of color. But it was not until 92, when he was chairman of the Joint Chiefs, that it was accomplished. My transformation of the JDF now is based largely on a thesis I wrote here while doing the MMAS. Although I shared it with my predecessors, I supported them when they wanted to do other things, and I waited until I became the child to take the opportunity to implement it. Four, identify your key enabler and don't compromise it. Faced with the enormous content we had to read and research, that's if you read it, <laughs> I had to develop reading skills to know the critical content and ignore the fluff. These skills have re remained with me. Five, you don't have to win every skirmish. While here, I was shortlisted as one of the nominees for the top international student award. I very much expected to win that award, having had similar recognition of the Royal Military Academy Sanders, the UK. I was voted a runner-up, and that taught me more lessons than winning would have. Six, select loyal staff. The emphasis placed on understanding the command intent during the mission analysis lectures here was very informative. I took from that that a smart, Competent staff that is working against the command is not going to allow you to achieve the intent. Therefore, what you need primarily is a loyal staff. Seven, make friends, because enemies will make themselves. This course is renowned for the large component of international students 
and I established lifelong friendships here. I was particularly struck by the fact that officers from countries that had political and diplomatic challenges got along very well with each other here, and that was a life lesson for me. Eight, knowing your enemy's vulnerabilities is more important than knowing their strengths. I mentioned that I took on three martial arts programs while here. One of them was Aikido. And Aikido is a Japanese martial art where you, it's underscores a non-aggressive approach to conquering one opponent. So you use your opponent's strengths against them. You discover their vulnerabilities. Nine, make time for family. Although I was unaccompanied while here, I saw the emphasis placed on family, enhanced by the program of sponsors and friends of students. This was critical for remaining sane during the demanding program that um, we have here, and that has remained with me. Finally, sheer success, but own the failures. While here, we had to do many group activities, and there were many weaker members of the group but the results were always presented as a group accomplishment. We shared the success with all, and that has remained with me. So in summary, own at least one problem in every job you take on that will define you. Set goals that are, uh, appear impossible to accomplish. Create a plan, but be patient, especially if you are not yet in command. Identify your key enabler and don't compromise it. You don't have to win every skirmish. Select loyal staff. Make friends because the enemies will make themselves. Know your enemies' vulnerabilities, even more so than their strengths. Make time for family and share success, but own the failures. Once again, thank you all very much for this honor. It has meant a lot to me, and certainly it's good to have my family here with me to share this. And it all came about because of the several things I learned here, from the academic program to the interactions with families and just the way that we do business here. So thank you all again very much. Please rise as we play the national anthems of the Argentine Republic, the Republic of India, and Jamaica, and remain standing for the departure of the official party.
Thank you for joining us for today's ceremony. Invited guests and international military students are encouraged to offer personal congratulations to our inductees in a receiving line in the upper atrium. Those wishing to go through the receiving line, please exit the auditorium using the Commander-in-Chief hallway. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you.